Hello, my name is Lea Zillig. My name is Lea Zirignano. And we both work in the Department of Genetic Epidemiology and Psychiatry at the Central Institute for Mental Health in Mannheim, Germany. And we're here today to talk about stigma. Mental illnesses, especially substance use disorders, are highly stigmatized. A common definition of stigma is that it is a mark or attribute that is deeply discrediting. Stigma marks a person and sets them apart from others. Stigma is typically linked to negative stereotypes and it helps to discriminate between us and them. Suffering from a mental illness is not always visible right away. Often getting help and starting treatment requires one to disclose one's illness. The fear of disclosure and subsequent stigmatization can cause affected persons to not seek help. This proposes one of the consequences of stigmatization. At the same time, stigmatization is also associated with low self-esteem, impaired social and occupational functioning, greater severity of psychiatric symptoms, and internalized or self-stigma, which is when affected individuals accept common stereotypes and apply them to themselves. There are ways to combat stigmatization. We can protest stigma when we encounter it. We can establish contact with people who are subject to stigmatization. And most importantly, we need to educate ourselves. To reduce stigma in our society, it is important to understand why some persons develop a disorder while others do not. A widely accepted assumption is that mental disorders result from an interaction between a person's biological and environmental factors. Biological factors can be, for example, genes that contribute to the risk of developing a mental illness. The discovery of these genes is one of the major aims of the Psychiatric Genomics Consortium. Environmental factors can be adverse, such as growing up in a negative family environment or experiencing stressful life events. Not to forget, stigmatization itself can be an adverse environmental factor. At the same time, the environment can also be protective, like having supportive relationships with peers and friends. To be more specific, it is assumed if a person has a low biological predisposition for a particular disorder, it would take more adverse environmental factors to trigger symptoms of that disorder. On the other hand, if a person has a high biological predisposition for a disorder, it would take less adverse environmental factors for symptoms to arise. We need to be aware that mental illness and its consequences affect all of us. While science and medicine continue to investigate the causes and the cures for mental illness, we all need to reach out to one another, try to be aware of stereotypes we might have, and correct prejudice when we encounter it.